I am not evil. I'm not a murderer. My mother calls me selfish. She called me a murderer. I thought this was the selfless thing to do. I thought this was the right thing to do. My mother wants me to bring life into a world that don't even care about life. No resources, no good home. Who would want to be brought into that? I'd be a terrible mother. And this would be a terrible home. I drank the tea. I ate lie, I threw myself, I, I harmed my body, I starved myself. I've ruined my body. I'm not evil. I am not a murderer. I'm not evil. I'm not a murderer. I'm not a murderer. I don't usually speak much, especially to people I don't know. It's not that I don't want to speak, I just don't always have the words. Like, I have the words, I just, I don't always know how to put them together. It gets me into a lot of shit. My mother says I should read more, so I read, slowly at first day by day. It feels tedious, but today, today just felt different, I don't know. I sat in the park and listened to the trees. Today I took my time reading. I started reading when I was ready. I don't know why, but it made a world of a difference. Page after page, I could feel myself falling deeper and deeper into the story. I was inside the book. I forgot where I really was. It felt like nothing I had ever experienced before. An interruption. Somebody was trying to bring me out of the story. I could see that they were trying to talk to me and they could see that I was reading and still demanded my attention. Maybe if I give them what they ask for, they'll leave me alone. Hey, yo, Ma, you looking real good over there. What you doing, reading? You want that intellectual shit I see real fucking sexy. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, can I read that over there with you? I, I just, you know, just trying to expand my vocabulary, you know, trying to expand you too. No, thank you. I don't think I can focus on what I'm reading with somebody else. What, you stuck up or something? I ain't trying to mess with you, girl. I, you know, I'm just trying to read, you know? What, you, what, what you, you, you scared of me or something? No, I, I'm not stuck up. I just wouldn't be able to focus. Now tell me this, what makes you think you wouldn't be able to focus with me reading with you? How you know I can't help your ass? I'm not saying you couldn't help me, I just, I don't know how to focus around people. It's not you, like I, I, I get all nervous. It, it, it's, not, it's not you. Well, if it's not me, how about we go to this nice reading spot we got? Real nice, real nice spot for focusing. I don't know. 
I feel kind of okay here. It's not too loud and there's birds. Yeah, I, I just, I'm pretty okay here. Mm. So you don't trust me or something? Man, fuck these birds. At my park, it's way better than this. It's even doper birds and soft music. Don't knock it till you try it. I suppose I could check it out. I guess. <laughs> Alrighty then. That's what I'm talking about. I don't even know your name or where you're trying to take me. My name's Dick, or Richard. Some people call me Rich, but you know, Dick is cool, or D. D for short, D is cool. Okay, and where are we going? Damn, girl, what, you don't believe me or something? I need more trust and less questions. Okay. I know I don't want to go with this man, but I also know he isn't going to leave me alone. What to do? I could lose him or run away, but then I couldn't come back to the park. Or what if he chases after me? He's staring at me. He probably knows what I'm thinking. A decision. I say nothing. A mistake. We get up and leave my precious hiding spot in the playground and start walking towards the exit. I'm visibly nervous. D sees this. I am anxiously looking for a cut, a turn, an exit, anything. Something. He sees this. He gets behind me. Fuck. It feels like we've been walking for 10 minutes. Another left turn. I muster up the strength to add farther. There's no answer. Another left turn. I don't know where we're going, but at this point, I'm just looking for the nearest exit. Something, anything to get me out of here. Another turn. This time, a right turn. This turn leads into an alley. There is no reading spot, no birds. I'm confused. I stop walking. I turn around and there's a gun pointed after me. D is holding the trigger. He orders me to give him my phone. I do. He tells me to give him my wallet and I tell him that I don't have any money he doesn't believe me. He puts the gun on my forehead and tells me to check again or else he'll kill me. I start bawling. I have no money. I, I tell him I have nothing. He is silent for a moment. Then he removes the gun from my forehead. He says to me, all right, you ain't got no money, fine. Take off your skirt. I don't move. I stand frozen in disbelief. His gun remains pointed at me. I'm panicking. I have no words, I have nowhere to run. All I can think about is the book. How much I'd rather be there than here. D grabs me and throws my body to the ground. I fall easily. I hit my heart so hard that I could feel it start to bleed still holding the gun towards my head. He snatches off my clothes. I feel weak. My head is bleeding and my skin is being punctured by the asphalt and rocks underneath me. I am surrounded by trash. All I can smell is garbage. D is heavy on top of me. He puts pressure on my arms and head so that I can't escape. I wonder if he sees my head bleeding. I don't think he can tell I'm losing consciousness. Maybe he does know, maybe he doesn't care. He forces himself into me, a lot. 
over and over, he's hurting me. I prayed that he come fast in, in, in hopes that it'd be over quickly. My mind is blank. I am numb. My heart is racing. I can't move. After forever is over, he lets go of my body. He stands up and I, I hear his zipper close. I cannot move. He leaves me there. I can't even lift my head enough to see him walk away. It feels as if all of the strength has been sucked from my body. Everything starts to slow down again. It is very bright and I can faintly hear the birds still. I passed out. Darkness. Nobody knew where I was and now I am no longer there. When my eyes open again, I try lifting myself up. It feels like I have died. I don't feel like I'm still alive. I stand. My head screams in pain. I have no idea where I'm at or how to get home. I start walking. I passed out again. The next time I open my eyes, I'm in a hospital room. I don't know how I got there, but I feel much more alive than before. I'm surrounded by white coats. There are three people talking to me at once. They want to know my name, my age, someone to call, any, any type of information that would identify me. I am mute. I would like to answer their questions, but I cannot. Eventually, I am well enough to walk again, and my head is wrapped, so they have no choice but to let me go. My nurses know something has happened to me. They wish they could help me. I know they can't. I know they can't help me. I call the only person who could help me, Lola. We real cool. We went to school together. We ditched school together. We stayed out late together. Lola doesn't hesitate to pick me up. There's a thousand questions waiting for me, of course. None of them I really know how to answer. I tell her what I can remember, and she stops asking me questions. It is silent for a very long time. She thinks I should tell my mom. I disagree. This isn't even an option for me. My mom finding out that her only daughter has been raped would be the ignition to a fire that would never stop burning. My mother finding out that what she's been trying to protect me from all my life actually happened would shatter her, literally. Lola poses a question. Well, what if, I don't know, what, what if you're pregnant? I haven't considered this. Well, I briefly thought about it in the moment, but I, I haven't really thought about it. I don't know. I asked Lola, would she be willing to, to take me to get an abortion? She thinks about this for a moment. She tells me, that she would have to pay thousands in fines and she would go to jail if anybody ever found out that she helped me. She says no fucking way without using any of those words. We pull up to the house and neither of us know what to say. I tell her thank you. She tells me good luck. 
I brace myself for whatever hell I'm about to walk into. My mother is in the kitchen, cooking like always. She is startled when she sees me, but not because I didn't come home last night, but because I didn't answer my phone. Where have you been, Katara? I've called you a thousand times. Did you see me calling you? Did you remember that you have a mother at home who's worried about you? Do you not care about your mother so much that you will ignore her and allow her to call you a million times without even texting back or calling? Hi, Mom. I'm okay, Mom. Something. That's so fucking stupid. What if something happened to you? How am I supposed to come get you if I don't even know what you're doing? Don't be an idiot, Katara. You should know better than to pull some shit like that. Hi, Mom. Somebody knocked me out and they stole my phone. Sorry I had you worried. I immediately turn to go towards my room and soak along. She stops me in my tracks. She tells me that dinner is ready and that she's been waiting for me. A gesture, a genuine gesture, or an apology of sorts. I don't know. I wish she'd just let me tell her what happened. After everything I had been went, gone through, I, I wasn't ready for her, for her wrath. But dinner smells amazing, and she gave me a hug, so. It is she could tell I didn't want to talk about it. She impressed me about what happened, and I appreciated that. I don't think I would have been able to, I don't think I would have survived that conversation. I'm turning around in my bed all night thinking about what Lola asked me. What if I was pregnant? I can't have a baby. I'm 16. I don't, I don't even have a job. I'm already knowing my mother wouldn't want me to have an abortion. She would say that it was ungodly and against Mother Nature. She's weird like that. It wouldn't be about me and my wants and needs, but about God. I never believed in God. I can never fathom how some, something, some, some higher power was just up in the sky, just watching all of us suffer, struggle, kill, die. I would think that if there was some body out there powerful enough to create all these people and things, they would create a world full of peace. Not all of these wasteful and destructful humans. God can't be there. If there was a God, I'd like to speak with them. Why me? Why this world with these people? Why, why any, why any of this? Why do some people die and some people live? Who gets to choose that? What did they do to deserve to die? What did they do to God to deserve such abrupt endings? Why did they lose their life for them or for her? Why anybody? God can't be real. If 
think they are? They're playing a real sick game. I sleep the whole night and late into the next day. It's a Sunday, so I don't have anything else to do. At some point, I feel like somebody's standing over me. I open my, mind, I open my eyes and my mother is glaring at me. Before I even get a chance already, I no longer looked at with love or luxury. Are you pregnant? You've been raped, I know. Don't bother lying to me. Lo told me everything. Fuck. I said, are you pregnant, Katara Marie? I am frozen. I don't know. I, I, I said, I, I don't know. I don't know. My mother snatches me out of my bed and carries me to her car. I'm screaming and confused. She takes me to my lady doctor, Bertha. She's nice. She can't keep a secret for shit though. She wouldn't even ask my mom to leave the room when she was talking to me. After what felt like forever, she came back. She said what I hoped she would dare. My mother breaks down in tears. I'm new. She can't even look at me. We ride home in the car in silence. When I get home, I turn straight to come towards my room and she stops me. You know you can't get rid of that baby, don't you? I don't know what type of plan you got, but God has a plan for that child you're marrying. There's a reason why you were chosen to walk this path. What? What are you what are you saying? I, what? I, I wasn't chosen. I, I was assaulted this, this is not my path this is not my job it's your baby you are their mother it's your job this is not my job i didn't ask for this i i, I didn't ask to be assaulted i i, I didn't ask for motherhood this, this is not happening I, baby it is happening you are having that baby and the sooner you grow up and accept the new reality you live in the easier this sends me off. I start screaming about how this is my body and my choice and how unfair it is for me to not only live in a world where nobody supports me, but my own mother doesn't support me. I start throwing up statistics about how many young women die to unfair pregnancy. Sit down, inhale, exhale. My mother sees how discontented I am with her words. <laughs> she adds more to her point. I had a friend when I was younger, Sadie. We were neighbors. Hung out all the time. We grew up together. 
Senior year comes around and everything is so new and exciting. Nobody knew this at the time, but we were both rapping. Sadie was raped at the beginning of summer, the last day of high school. I refused to go to college prep because I knew how much my family would be disappointed. Sadie stayed home. When I went to college, Sadie bore two babies. She was happy. She has a lovely family. She was supported in her choices. I didn't have that growing up. Abortions will not let you forget. I have heard in the wind of the voices of my dead killed children. They never got a chance at life. Abortion forfeits the chance for a more enriched life. You will never neglect or beat them or silence your children or buy them with a sweep. You will never learn from them or teach them what you've learned. You will never get a chance to love unconditionally and for that love to be reciprocated. Choose life. It's evil what you're trying to do. You would murder your own children. Don't be selfish, Katara. Give me liberty or give me death, I say. She smacks me. I must have really pissed her off because she runs out of the room. I can hear her crying through the walls. I don't care. This is my body. I shouldn't have to be forced to do stuff I don't want to do. I shouldn't have to be forced to deal with the aftermath of somebody else's wrongdoing. I have to get rid of this baby. My friend won't help me. My mother won't help me. The state won't help me. Over the next month, I am anxiously looking for options situations, scenarios, anything that could help me. I can't check out any books, so I turn to the dark web. The shit I see on there is terrifying. Looking up do-it-yourself abortions, do it at home, man. The stuff I see on there is horrifying to look at. I try imagining what scraping my insides look at, look, feel like. I can't. This is a terrible thing to think about. I don't know what else to do. I eventually try everything I see on the internet. Nothing makes my stomach bleed. I try falling down the stairs. I end up hitting my head more than my own stomach. I don't think it's a good idea. I don't know why people thought that was a good idea. I drank the tea. I swallowed lye. I did everything. One night, my mother comes to me. She tells me that in the morning, we're gonna go see a doctor, a different doctor. No. This doctor will Tell me how far along I am, and what the next steps are. I want to tell her that I already know what my next steps are. I hold my tongue. She leaves my room, and I instantly spring up. Tonight has to be the night. Out of all of my attempts, tonight has to be the one that does it. I have to get rid of this baby before I see the doctor tomorrow.
My mother calls me evil. She says that I'm selfish. My mother wants me to bring life into a world that don't even care about life. No resources, no life, no home. I'd be terrible mother. And this would be a terrible home. I drink the tea. I swallow lies. I try everything. My mother's words repeat inside my head. Abortions Sit down. Inhale. Exhale. You do not have Sit to down. Die this day. Inhale. Death will abide. Exhale. Will pamper your postponement. Sit down. I Inhale. You. Exhale. Death has a Sit down. Inhale. Exhale. Tomorrow. Sit down. Inhale. Exhale. Uh, you need not die down. today. Inhale. Thank you.